Hey everyone, Recap Genius here. Today I'm going to explain a 2021 American science fiction film called Voyagers. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The Earth is slowly dying and scientists are looking for a new planet to sustain human life. They finally find it in the year 2063. It is shown on the screen. A woman then explains that scientists and astronomers discovered a new Earth-like exoplanet whose colonization would likely ensure the continued existence of mankind. She also mentions that a scouting mission to the planet should be sent. The crew of the interstellar generational spacecraft will reproduce on the ship to conceive children during the 86-year-long journey, in order to ensure that their grandchildren will successfully reach the exoplanet and save humanity from potential extinction. For this purpose, 30 artificially conceived children are bred from the genomes of exceptionally intelligent humans. Then we see a man talking about the reason behind this plan. He justifies why the crew will be specifically engineered to man the mission, consisting of children that were raised and trained to be a part of this mission. The next step is deciding when they'll be ready to go. The younger the CRE is, the longer resources can be preserved. But the scientist Richard is worried that children lack equipment to deal with the complexity of space travel on their own. Later we see Richard enter into a facility where the children crew is being raised. He gets into a full protective suit and enters a room where they live. When they see him they cheerfully welcome him. Richard monitors them when they are being educated. When it's time to sleep he tucks Christopher, Sella and Zack into bed. Zack tells him he's afraid, but Richard comforts him by saying that he's safe. The next day Richard is talking with a woman in charge of the mission. He tells her that they should let him go with the children so he can raise and protect them. His addition to the mission would also mean that they would be able to launch in four years instead of seven. In the next scene we see the mission launch with Richard on board. The ship for the mission is called Humanitas. They all go inside and find their quarters as Richard takes one last look at Earth. Ten years later, the children are all grown into adults as they can be seen waking and getting ready to start their day on the ship. They take their first lesson which covers fertilization for the second generation which will begin in the 24th year of their lives. All of the astronauts have special tasks on board, which are personally overseen by Richard, and said tasks are conducted in a strange and borderline robotic manner. Later Christopher and Zack are seen listening to classical music. Sella walks through the ship and looks to the dark space surrounding them. Later she is talking to Richard, saying that the lives of the crew are not important. He comforts her by showing her pictures of her grandparents, telling that providing for the future is very important. That night Christopher couldn't sleep. He listens to the sounds of the ship. The next day Richard and Christopher are at the hydroponics bay checking the state of the plants. When suddenly a message about the water toxicity appears on Christopher's screen. He asks Richard about it thinking it's some kind of chemical that isn't being processed from their urine. Then later he asks Zack about the ingredient T56J and they wonder why the information is unavailable. During the night, they both come back to figure out what it is. Christopher bypasses the firewall and finds the information. The chemical ingredient is found in the blue liquid they drink. Zack thinks it was a digestion aid, but soon they figure out that it has other effects on their personality. It makes them dull and submissive, decreasing their desires and pleasures. They are being drugged and pacified, so they don't reproduce naturally and overpopulate the ship. So two of them stop drinking the liquid. Later they share the information with Kai and Julie along with the hidden compartment on the ship. Later Christopher is in a session with Richard. He says that he knows that he has been lying to them, but only mentions the hidden compartment POD-23. Richard thinks that there is a reason the mission lied to them and that the pod might be for the third generation. After the session Richard sends a message to Earth asking if he could be honest and share everything with the crew, so they don't lose faith in him. While standing in line next to Sella, Christopher has fantasy about her. They eat lunch and he keeps looking at her when Zack approaches her by telling she has changed. Richard comes in and tells him not to grab her because of the rules. In the gym Christopher and Zack are seen fighting and taking it a bit too far. Others are confused and don't understand what's happening. They both start to feel the effect of not taking the drug. They hear the ship noises and go to the observation room where they see one of their fellow crew members. The three of them talk about what it might be, so he tells them that he thinks it might be some kind of alien-like form. 
Sela and Richard are in his office. He shows her dried plants from Earth. Zack and Christopher hear them talking and approach the room. Zack sees Richard touching Sela's shoulder and gets jealous. Richard informs them that they've lost contact with the Earth and their transmitter needs to be repaired. Zack will help him out, when others will continue with their roles. During preparations Zack sees Sela and approaches her. She tells him about the suit he'll have to wear and he starts touching her inappropriately. Richard runs in and pushes him away from her. He asks Zack what's happening, but he runs away. Looking for him, Richard sees Phoebe and she tells him that he stopped taking the blue liquid. Next he runs into Christopher and finds out that he stopped taking the drug as well. They argue, but Richard tells him that the drug was implemented to stop precisely the type of behavior he witnessed in Zack. He asks Christopher for help to fix the transmitter, so that when it's online he'll back him up when he voices his objections to mission control. All the other crew members are ready in their positions at the ship, while prep for the spacewalk is underway. Zack enters the systems room. Richard and Christopher go outside the ship. Christopher is experiencing sensations he hasn't felt before, so Richard keeps an eye on him. Richard repairs one of the transmitter parts then goes over to the second one. Inside the ship the noises from the ship can be heard again and the crew is getting restless. They check to see if anything else is outside and suddenly something appears on screen next to Richard and Christopher. It hurts Richard pulling him away from the ship. The ship has some kind of malfunction as well. No one knows what is happening and starts to panic. Systems room catches on fire. Christopher brings Richard inside and they take him to medical. Different types of errors appear on the ship. From navigation to communication, the medical team are trying to revive Richard, but it doesn't work. Sela is the chief medical officer and pronounces him dead. Later the crew has a meeting where they discuss what is happening. They also mention the creaking sound they hear. One of the crew members says that he saw something on the monitor when it happened. He explains it looked like a force jumping into Richard, like it was something alien. Then Phoebe starts crying. Christopher comforts them by saying that if they keep it together they'll be alright. The systems reboot and the crew is checking the surveillance archive but all the footage has been deleted by the fire in the systems room. They decide to choose a new chief officer. Zack says that he should be the chief, but the others say that they need an election. All of them vote and place Christopher as the chief officer. Zack is jealous, but congratulates him regardless. First order is repairing the damage in the transmitter. He gets the entire crew working on the other repairs on the ship caused by the fire. The surveillance system is the last thing on the repair list, so they can see what happened to Richard. They hope the drives are still intact. Sela goes to his office and looks through his pictures and videos, when Christopher arrives at the door. She tells him that she is supposed to destroy his personal archive even though she doesn't want to do it. She shows him Richard's photographs and they talk about the importance of parents. He asks why Richard told her about his life thinking they might be more than friends but she explains that he was just feeling alone. They look through his video diary where he explains how much he believes in the mission and talks about how much he cares for them. Christopher is looking for the crew and finds them in the cantina. Angry that they're not at their posts. Zack tells him that they're repairing the refrigerators, so they don't lose any food supplies. But there's a bunch of food that might go bad so he asks if they can have a feast to celebrate their new chief officer. After they eat. Kai tells others not to drink the blue and they all dump it. Sela and Christopher are looking through Richard's videos laughing and enjoying themselves. Christopher feels increasingly more attractive to her. Zack feels attracted to Julie. He touches her and she touches him back. The others are looking at them. Later the crew can be seen playing, fighting and running around the ship, having fun. They all look through Richard's personal archive. Sela finds them in its quarters and tells them to leave, but they refuse to. Zack is the last to leave, telling that Richard isn't here anymore to protect her. She goes back to the med bay and grabs a scalpel. Christopher is following Zack, worried he might do something to Sela. When he sees that she is in the med bay he goes there before Zack can. Zack arrives and Christopher pretends that they two are making love, so he leaves. Sela threatens him with a scalpel not understanding his intentions. But when he says he's there to help her, she says she should help the rest of the crew, because they're getting out of control. Christopher leaves and finds Zack along the way, telling him to leave her alone, when they hear a strange crackling noise again. He follows it around the ship as others can hear it too. 
Kai sees Julie getting close to another crewmate, so he flies into rage and punches him off of her. They fight. Later in the cantina, Christopher tries to get the crew to behave, but they don't like it. Suddenly the crewman Kai beat up starts hitting him with a tool. Christopher stops him by hitting him in the face. He tells everyone to get Kai and the other one treated and then to meet up. He tells everyone that the fighting has to stop and the preparations have to continue. Zack challenges him and the others think they shouldn't be doing the work because they won't get to the end of the mission. Christopher says see that their grandchildren will and they'll need to support them. One of the crew members says that he doesn't want to work in the systems room because the alien lives there. He thinks Christopher brought it in when Richard died. Phoebe suggests repairing the surveillance system and seeing what happened, but Zack silences her and tells Christopher to shut up too. He doesn't care about the rules anymore and tries to get the others on his side, saying Christopher isn't the right leader. Zack thinks he should be the leader and tries to convince others to be a part of his group, which will be strong enough to fight the alien if it's there. Many of the crew members follow him, but some of them stay on the Christopher's side. That group goes to the surveillance system to fix the system, afraid the alien might be there. Christopher goes in first to check. Zack and others reach the system's room. He and Kai go inside the room not knowing Christopher has been in there too. To go deeper inside the room to look for the alien. The ones on the outside see something happening inside and Zaz and Kai run out terrified. Sealing the room as they leave. Later they tell others from the group that the alien attacked them. Meanwhile Christopher brings the surveillance drive to Sela in the Med Bay. Him and a few others check the footage. They find the footage from the systems room and realize that it was Zack and Kai that killed Richard by electrocuting him, then lied about the alien. The group decides to keep quiet for a moment until they figure out what to do. Christopher and Sela hide the drive in her room and talk about Zack. He thinks that this is what they're really like without the drug, but she disagrees, saying that the two of them are different. He says that he's worried that the others won't care about the truth and that maybe he doesn't care either. Sela tells him to stay with her. They kiss and then they sleep together. In the morning there's a knock on Sela's door. It's Zack saying that he'll come inside one way or another. When she and Christopher open the door Zack and Kai invite them to another celebration at the cantina. Christopher's group arrives when all the others are already eating. Zack invites them to get some food. When they sit down he stands up and proclaims himself as the new chief officer. Suddenly Christopher stands up too, goes to a monitor and plays footage from the incident. He tells the others that Zack killed Richard and there is no alien, that he's been lying to them. He suggests Zack can find himself in his room, while they can solve the program and they decide what to do. Everyone gets upset and Zack confesses, saying he did it to protect them, because the alien was in Richard and Christopher brought it inside. He convinces the other that the alien is inside the ship, hiding in one of them. Zack says that they need to find it and kill it, which they all agree on. He puts them against each other and they start fighting. They think it's the crewman that works at Medbay and they start chasing after him. Christopher follows Sue. Kai hits him first, then the others join and they beat him to death. Christopher takes his group to a secure place in a ship, while Zack's group goes into the Med Bay and they arm themselves. Christopher's group tries to figure out what to do and some of them want to give up saying they can't do anything at the moment. They think they should join Zack's crew and try to detain him later as his crew has weapons and they don't. Sela realizes that Christopher knows about the weapons hidden in the ship's secret compartment. Christopher goes to find it by himself. He opens a compartment and crawls inside, searching for it. When he finally finds it he can't open it and an alarm goes off, which Julie and another crewman hear. They can hear him inside the compartment and tell Zack about it. Christopher gets out to get some tools to open the compartment, but when he comes back the other group has already taken the compartment. They open the secret compartment and find the weapons. Kai thinks they're meant for the third generation, but Zack says they are for them. Two people from Christopher's crew want to join Zack's crew and the others. Zack asks where they are hiding. Sela, Christopher and Phoebe devise a plan on how to get close to Zack. He suggests that they should kill him, but Phoebe doesn't like it. Sela watches them on a monitor and sees that they're moving, coming after them. They cut their power and arrive at the room. Sela tells her group not to resist as the others swarm the room and grab them. Sela stops them as they're dragging Christopher away and asks to talk privately to Zack. 
She said she wants to be with him and join his group. As she walks up to him he rejects her, laughing at her when Phoebe appears asking if they've all gone crazy. She says they can decide not to act the way they have, but they all tell her to shut up. Suddenly Kai kills her to the shock of everyone, including Zack, but he turns it around and goes after Christopher. He and Sela escape, but the others hunt for them throughout the ship. They hide in a vent, but the others quickly find which one it is. Zack shoots inside as Julie tells him to be careful, because he's destroying their food supply. He sends one of his men after them to see if he got them, but they've escaped again. Suddenly someone shoots at them, so they start looking for weapons. Christopher finds a fire extinguisher and as Kai comes inside the med bay they incapacitate him and accidentally kill him. Zack finds them fast and shoots at them as they run away. They get into an airlock and Christopher tells Sela to get into a spacesuit. He covers the window of the airlock. When Zack reaches them he shoots without hesitation. Suddenly he's sucked inside, because a hatch to the outside has been opened. He grabs Sela and goes to close the hatch, fighting with her and eventually stabbing her with a knife. Christopher pushes him outside the hatch, but as they fight ends up sucked out in space himself. Before Zack can close the hatch Sela kicks him out of there. She searches for Christopher waiting for him to come back and suddenly sees him holding on to the ship. The two of them then come back inside and tell the others that Zack is gone. They put down their weapons. Sometime later all of the crew is having lunch in the cantina. Sela asks Christopher how they can make sure something like that never happens again. They listen to some of Richard's recordings again in which he says that no matter what bad happens on the mission, the ones that prevail are proof that humans are worth saving. The crew votes for a new chief again and chooses Sela. She records a diary in which she says that they will vote for everything from that moment on and that they'll still not go back to the blue. The crew continues repairing the ship and work together in peace as time goes by. Sela can be seen pregnant and the baby is Christopher's. The baby is born. A few years later it can be seen running on the ship and joining other children. Those children grow up on a ship as the first generation grows old. 86 years since the start of the mission the Humanitas can be seen floating in space and engaging its drive to land on a planet. The younger generations and the older ones look toward their new home on the alien planet. If you like this type of content please consider subscribing, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel grow. Thank you for watching.